Hey guys, today I have the i5 14600K and I'm not just gonna be testing that processor, I'm going to be testing all the LGA 1700 socket type i5s, but I'm focusing on K series i5s. That's the 12600K, the 13600K, and the 14600K. We'll do some benchmarks and then we'll do some gaming benchmarks and we'll actually play some games. We'll see what kind of improvement we get from the 12600K all the way to the 14600K. And we're going to see if the new i5 14600K sucks. It's going to be pretty sicko mode. So before we get started, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And every video I post will be more sicko mode than the last. All right, let's get to it. So first things first, let's talk about the specs of these processors and the LGA1700 socket type. So the LGA1700 socket type was released in 2021 and was meant to replace the outgoing LGA1200 socket type. It's used by the Intel 12th gen, 13th gen, and 14th gen processors. Normally Intel only keeps the socket the same for about two generations. Looking back at the LGA1200, you could only use 10th and 11th generation with that socket. And LGA1151, Intel's website says 9th, 8th, 7th, and 6th, which is kind of deceiving. 9th through 6th gen processors physically look the same, but when the 8th and 9th gen processors came out, you had to use LGA1151 300 series motherboards. So once again, only two generations. So you can either look at it at one of two ways. You can look at it as, wow, Intel's keeping the same socket type so that we can continue to use the motherboards we have. Or Intel is using the 14th generation processors as a buffer year. Or in other words, Intel wasn't really ready to release brand new processors with a new socket type and just release a refresh with very similar specifications and architecture to the previous generation. Now comparing these three processors on paper, prices on the 13th gen and the 12th gen have significantly dropped with the 12600K being less than half the price of the 14th gen. Now you only get 10 cores 16 threads as opposed to the 14 cores 20 threads on both the 13th and 14th gen as well as faster stock clock speeds. 13th gen and 14th gen definitely use a lot more power than the 12th gen but the power usage between the 14th gen and the 13th gen was pretty much identical and all three processors release dates are about a year apart. So at least on paper it looks like the biggest performance jump was between the 12th and the 13th gen. Let's see how much of an improvement the 14600K actually is. Now let's talk about the build that I have it in. Rocking a Z690 Gigabyte AORUS Elite motherboard. This board still uses DDR4 RAM, which is fine for gaming. DDR5 RAM is kind of overrated. And we're going to be using 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance RAM. Cooling all three CPUs, I'm using the Deepcool AK620 Zerdark cooler, a 1TB WD Black NVMe. My benchmark card is the RTX 3080, so that's what I'm using. This card came out in 2020, and in 2023, almost 2024, this card still packs a punch. An 850 watt power supply, and it's all inside to the Corsair 4000D airflow case. Now let's talk about some benchmarks. The first test I ran was the Cinebench test. In the multi-core test, there was a slight improvement between the 14th and 13th gen, about a four and a half increase in score. Between the 14th gen and the 12th gen, there is about a 45% increase in the score, which makes sense because you're getting more cores and more threads. Single core testing was a lot closer. Between 14th and 13th gen, about four and a half percent again, and 14% between the 14th gen and the 12th gen. For gaming, this is more important. Now when running that 3D Mark gaming benchmark, score Scores were actually neck and neck. It was about a 2% increase between the 13th and 14th gen, and a 6% increase between the 12th gen and the 14th gen. Now moving on to the time spy test, for some reason I kept getting better scores with the 13th gen over the 14th gen. It's interesting because this test relies more on the CPU, and yet the 13th gen kept getting better scores, and it was about a 5% increase between the 14th gen and the 12th gen. All right, now let's move on to gaming, and the first game I tested was Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1440p ultra settings with ray tracing on. Average FPS for the 14th and 13th gen are identical. If you look at the 1% and 0.1% lows, that's when you see the benefits of having slightly faster clock speeds. When you look at the 12th gen, dips below 100 FPS, which still isn't really that bad, but the higher that your 1% and 0.1% lows are, the smoother the gameplay. Higher average FPS helps too, but average FPS alone doesn't tell the entire story. However, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a slightly older game, so any of these three processors will handle it pretty easily. 
The next game I ran was Starfield. Now with Starfield at 1440p ultra settings, I was kind of expecting them to be neck and neck. Cause for my testing, it seems like this game is more GPU dependent. And when you look at average FPS, 1% and 0.1% lows, there's not really much of a difference. I will say this game doesn't look the greatest. The trees don't look super realistic. And overall, it's just like an okay experience. I'm not really much of a Starfield guy, but if you're a Starfield guy or girl, any of these three processors will handle it just fine. But make sure you have a beefy GPU because at 1440p Ultra, the RTX 3080 was barely hitting 60 FPS average. After that, I ran Cyberpunk. Once again, 1440p Ultra settings with ray tracing on. Cyberpunk is a very GPU dependent game, so having more cores and more threads doesn't necessarily help. The 14600K was only slightly better than the 13600K, while the 13600K and the 12600K were pretty much identical. Now, averaging over 70 FPS is nothing to complain about when playing Cyberpunk, but if you need more FPS, just turn ray tracing off. You'll get closer to 100 FPS. Me personally, I think ray tracing makes a big difference in this game, so I would say once you go ray tracing, it's hard to go back. Then I ran the Red Dead Redemption 2 test. 1440p ultra settings. Average FPS was pretty much identical across the board, which I thought was a little surprising. The 0.1% lows was the biggest difference, so when there's scenes with a lot going on, 14600K should look smoother. Both the 13th gen and the 14th never dip below 60 FPS, so there is improvement there. And remember guys, the 14th gen processors are only refreshes, so don't expect monumental FPS increases, but I would say a 20 FPS difference in 1% lows can make a difference between smooth gameplay and choppy gameplay. And the final game I ran was GTA 5. GTA 5 is a much older game, so you would expect your FPS to be pretty high. And all three processors easily hit well over 144 frames per second at 1440p ultra settings. The 0.1% lows on the 12600K though dipped below 100 FPS, which honestly isn't much to worry about. Gameplay is still super smooth. There's really nothing to complain about if you have either of these three processors. And if you are complaining about having either of these three processors, then you need to move out of your parents' house. But overall, it was a very pleasant day at the beach. After figuring out what kind of improvement we get from the 12600K to the 13600K to the 14600K, I would say that the improvement in gaming between these processors was kind of subtle. The Shadow of the Tomb Raider saw the biggest difference when it came to average FPS, 1% lows and 0.1% lows. Red Dead Redemption 2 saw the second biggest increase when it came to the 0.1% lows. All the other games are pretty much neck and neck. Now when it comes to multi-core tests like Cinebench, there was a pretty big difference between the 14600K and the 12600K. So if you need to do some video editing or 3D rendering, there is a significant difference because of the higher core and thread count. Now from the 13600K, not really much of a difference. Just slightly faster clock speeds. Realistically, if you have a 13600K already, you're probably not looking to upgrade right away. So there's no real reason to get mad that the 14600K isn't much of an improvement because you're not even in the market for a processor. If you have a 12600K, you're also probably not in the market for a processor. You're not going to be upgrading every generation of processor. Really the only people I see being upset are the people who are running benchmark tests and who buy every new processor that comes out every year. Surprisingly Intel gave us three processors using the same socket type which hasn't been seen since I don't know but usually it's just been two processors every socket type. If you're in the market for an Intel gaming processor and you're wanting an unlocked processor, I think the best bang for the buck is the 13600K. Now if you're on a budget, the 12600K is still a really good option. There are other options like the AMD Ryzen 5 7600X, i5 processors that aren't unlocked like the 13400F or the 12400F, but that's gonna have to be for another video. The 14600K is better than the 13600K, but if I can save 60 bucks and get very similar performance, I'm going with the 13600K. Now in a couple years from now, let's say you have an i5-12400F and you're looking to upgrade your CPU but don't want to upgrade your motherboard. The 14600K would probably have a decent price drop and will definitely be a good performance upgrade. But as of right now, I think the 13600K is the sweet spot. And to answer the question that I asked at the beginning of this video, does the 14600K suck? It doesn't really suck that bad. The 13600K is just very close in performance. Once we see 
price drops, the 14600K will definitely be a good upgrade option if you're still rocking an LGA1700 motherboard. But let me know what you guys think. Should we really be getting that mad about the performance you get from an i5-14600K? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. If you have any questions, if you have video ideas, let me know in the comments. Every video I post will be more sicko mode than the last. I will be posting more often. I've just been sick these last several weeks and I haven't been feeling like filming. I don't know if you could tell my voice, it's a little, little froggy still, but I will be posting more often. Hopefully this content is helpful and like always, have a sicko mode day. Thank <music> you.